Hi, I'm Maggie. Hi, I'm Grace, and this is a very bookish podcast. Hey guys, welcome back to our podcast. This is going to be episode 11, and we have a very special guest. We yes. Today. Hi, I'm Day, um, aka Literary Lesbian on TikTok. Um, but it's good to be here. Yeah, yeah we're, we're so excited. Me too. Hey, Grace, um, you just. Yeah. I sorry we're so awkward today. I'm really tired. I've had a busy day. I was like, oh, it's gonna be on a Monday. It's like my my like least like busy day. It's not on a Tuesday. And then shit just went to down the drain at work and I'm like, ah yeah. hectic. But I have been trying to work with you to get you on. I feel so bad because I like kept pushing back. I just have such a hectic schedule. It's, no, so, I understand I was able. stuff happens, you know. <laughs> yeah especially going on with the world as it is yeah so um, okay yes uh kind of to start this off do you want to kind of give us a little bit about yourself uh your background some of that just so that our listeners know who you are sure okay so I have a TikTok account obviously um I don't but um yeah, but I'm literary lesbian on TikTok. I've been on TikTok for probably a little over like six months at this point. Um, and I'm 16 and I'm trying to think about other interesting stuff about me. I don't know, I just like books. That's kind of why I have my TikTok account. That's still why I'm on it, but yeah. What, um, were you like a lot of people throughout like this past year that picked up reading again for the first time or? Um, I always had like read like, but probably like maybe two books a month. And then during quarantine, I, the algorithm put me on book talk for some reason. And I started reading again. I did start reading with Sarah J Mass, which is very ironic because I dislike her now. But um, so I got in like with like the more popular books on book talk and then started just finding my own stuff. And yeah, but I read a lot more now than I used to when I started, but. Yeah, I, I feel that's common with a lot of book talkers is they start with the Sarah J Moss. Cause it was like last year around April, May, June is when Sarah J Moss was really popular and then July hit and mass exodus of everybody realizing how problematic yeah. some of her content is and then we have this month where she's just booming again um, because of her release of her new book which yeah book book writing in itself is hard so kudos to her for being able to write for so long I don't know how I would be able to write so many books I think my brain power would just die yeah, I have heard people, I think it's interesting to try to think which authors have ghostwriters. Um, I've heard some people mm. think that she does. Um, it, it's a little crazy that she's releasing that many books at once. Um, yeah, I, I mean, ghostwriters do help people like have jobs and stuff. I noticed I was yeah. watching a ghostwriter. I follow her on TikTok and she was like, yeah, I'm a ghostwriter. And but people are like, well, we want you to get like recognition and stuff. And she's like, well, like, that's not my job. It's my job is to like help the author, like help them mm -hmm. write and stuff. That's what I'd write. Yeah. If I wanted to be an author myself, I would do it. And I was like, that was an interesting perspective that like having a ghostwriter isn't that bad. Um, yeah. Cause like Grace, Grace and I write together and like even writing a book myself, it's like, damn, I wish I had somebody like help me just a little bit with these little scenes or something mm -hmm. or Definitely. my whole book. <laughs> yeah. But um, kind of to piggyback off of that, since you did say Sarah J Moss, what was some other content or books that really got you um, into reading as a kid? And like, since you've been reading kind of for your whole oh. life. Yeah, okay. I definitely got to say Warrior Cats. I was into that. People make fun of it, but I stand by the fact that that is a good series. Mm -hmm. I will stand by that. And I will defend that book. It's a good book. I, and then um, Percy Jackson, the classic that was, I remember picking that up in like fifth grade and I was obsessed with it. it made it my whole personality in middle school, but. I, I feel um, like if you, oh, um, sorry, it just cut out really quickly. <laughs> um, I, I feel like everybody has to read Percy Jackson or they went through like the God phase of like liking Greek mythology, like every person, I, like every reader. Mm -hmm. 
every reader, like, if you haven't, like, not gonna lie, if you haven't gone through that, are you really a reader? Like, have, if you haven't gone through, like, the gods, like, I used to, like, know all of them by heart. Same. Like, so it was, I was, I was, like, where, where's my religion to, like, convert to, like, Greek mythology like I want to be able to like worship these gods and stuff I was I'm not, I'm not religious at all and so I was always like I want to worship Poseidon because of Jackson. you know it's funny because like I got it when I, I was homeschooled for a while and like um I got into the to Greek mythology because my dad was the one teaching me and everything and it really stuck with me and so I was like okay like yes this is it right and then like when I went back to school uh, I noticed a lot of people in school didn't have that and I was like that's weird and then as an adult like I, I work with fourth graders and I work with the uh, other te teachers and we have a Greek mythology theme that we're going to go into and I was just like, oh, this God and, and Poseidon and Hades and Hermes and all these things. And I start talking about it. My coworkers just look at me like, how do you know all this stuff? And I'm just like, well, well, didn't you guys, you, you didn't, you didn't, oh, you didn't go through that phase. Oh, okay. I, I see. Right. <laughs> I feel read. like everyone either went through like a Harry Potter phase or Percy Jackson phase. Like one of them was like significantly larger. I was never the, like, I'm not gonna sit here and hate on Harry Potter well I'll hate on J.K. Rowling but I I was never like the biggest fan of it. I, I read the series I feel like that's a like rite of passage to read that but I Percy Jackson was always my jam and nothing compared at that time. <laughs> it honestly hits a little bit harder I have not gone through the entire series because you know reading slumps hit and then you just forget about reading for a while but when I read it the first book I remember like it really like speaking to me and I was just like so enamored with it because it was like very different and I just like fell in love with it. I read the first Harry Potter book and it just wasn't the same. It didn't hit me the same way. Percy Jackson definitely hit a little bit more than Harry Potter. And yeah. now that I'm an adult, I'm going to go back and actually finish Percy Jackson. We're, I'm planning to read it this summer because you know, summer vibes and so, yeah but yeah and I'm hoping to like fall in love again I'll be a little brother into it too so oh yeah we're gonna see yeah um, I got I my older younger. brother to read it you did really oh. yeah um he was he was talking about like wanting to get into reading and he's he likes like mythology in general I was like you should read Percy Jackson and he's like that's a kid's book and I was like books are for all ages first of all but I believe he's on the second book. He's been on the second book for a while, but you know, I, I've gotten reading the songs before. So I understand. You just have been there. Yeah. Get through it, get over the slump and then continue on the series as long as you get there. Yeah. That actually transitions right into one of my questions was how do you get out of a reading slump? Like, is there a specific book that you reread in order to get out of the slump? <laughs> this is okay. actually a question from one of your followers that asked us. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Um, to get out of a reading slump, it's a good question. I'm the type of person who, whenever I'm in a reading slump, I just start picking up like random books. Like, and cause I, some people like will not read more than one book at one time, but like I've read like 12 books at once before. I don't recommend it, but um, so I'll just like start picking up and starting books and like starting reading them. And it's like, eventually I'll finish one and then like, usually I'm able, but I, I also don't recommend that. Um, so I think rereading your favorite book, I definitely, oh, okay, I forgot. I definitely, like, I'm the type of person who, like, tabs scenes that, like, I really thought were, like, cute, and so, like, I'll, like, every once in a while, I'll kind of just, like, pick, like, my favorite books off my bookshelf and just, like, reread all the, like, scenes that I really liked, and usually that gets me, like, into it, like, does that make sense? Yeah. I've done that before. I had a big reading slump um, after from Blood Nat and or like a book after that and I just went back through a couple of favorites and just like kept like rereading a couple scenes and then I found myself wanting to like feel that whole thing of finishing a book 
and then like I got right back into it so yeah yeah so that, that yeah. definitely I also think audiobooks help with reading slumps because I got in the middle of a reading slump right in the middle of these violent delights um because we read it for our book club and literally I didn't read for like a full week and I wanted to I wanted to finish it but I was just like I can't and so um I ended up just using the audiobook and that helps you like go through it really speak like on t- like I will use like the ebook for some reason because like I like reading physical books but for some reason like when you're just like when you like can't get off your phone you're like oh I like need to read but like reading on ebook like is actually pretty it helped me a lot I'll like I'll find myself like reading stuff way quicker um I don't know if that's just me but it feels like it goes faster I yeah because like even today like I'm, I'm reading a, a big series right now and like I found myself like, okay, let me just spend like five minutes on TikTok, you know, scrolling through. But then like, it's just like, okay, one more video. Okay, one more video. And then it's just like, no, like I need to stop right now so I can go read. So I definitely think like, like yeah, just switching between apps, between like your Kindle app or to your book app and then just using that scrolling finger <laughs> to flip yeah. the book. I can see how that would work. And mm. kind of making me want to think to go back to my ebooks a little bit yeah I oh do you want to go first <laughs> oh no I was no go ahead <laughs> I was gonna say ebooks are definitely like the best invention for readers because like going on vacation and stuff now I don't have to worry about bringing a ton of books because that's what I would always do like I would rent a bunch of books from the library and then worry about like bringing them over because like some of my books would just fill up my luggage and then maybe I wouldn't have clothes for a couple days <laughs> And I think ebooks are literally God's gift to man. Um, I don't believe in God, but I'm just saying that. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I like last year, that's how I read all of the books. Cause I read like over a hundred books and I read like 60 books through like my library. And that saves me a ton of money. Oh yeah. La- the ebook libraries are so good. Like I have it through my like library system. And just being able to like rent out ebooks is so nice. Yeah, especially when they have like audiobooks and ebooks. So you can like, especially when you don't have to place them on hold, you can check them out immediately. And you're like, yeah, oh, yes, I can just get in the next book. And it's like, that's how I would read like super fast series. I'd like just get them all. I check them all out at once. And then I just return them as I like finish the books and like. Oh, that would make me, I like max I check out two I get so anxious about it and you literally I like finish the book like pretty quick but for some reason I am so, too scared to do it I it makes no sense it but. does it looks intimidating when you're like going through like your like library and you're like oh my god I have so many books I need to read but <laughs> I definitely still have books I like maybe put on hold in like the middle of January and are just sitting in there because I haven't started <laughs> It's funny because like I have access to Maggie's library account because like we'll, we'll we'll share everything. Yeah. Like because like there was a book that I wanted for the audiobook. Um, you had me at Ola by um, Alexis um, Daria, and I wanted the audiobook because I have the physical book. Uh, Celine got it, and I wanted the audiobook. But it, here in Los Angeles, it's out everywhere, and there's like eight people in line for each copy of it and I was like no I'm not gonna get it for weeks and I'm trying to read it this month and so then I'm like I wonder if Maggie's library has it (laughs) and I like switched apps and I go to hers and there's like literally no hold so I'm just like okay we're just gonna add this to her library (laughs) real quick and then I ended up texting her later on telling her hey by the way that that book right there that's that's mine and then I looked throughout her whole library and she has like 10 books and then she (laughs) more on the wish list and I'm just like not even me um so I'd like to just hoard books um I think everybody knows I kind of have a buying obsession never have had a buying obsession because I never had like my own money and then I got adult <laughs> money and then I was like books like serotonin levels go up when I go into a bookstore yeah. especially because I go to like half price books or like I go to the bargain section and so I always get like really cheap book, like good books for really cheap. And I'm like, oh, it's, it's like cocaine for me. 
the worst part like I feel I have so many books on my physical TBR and I really do not need to be reading like ebooks but like it, for some reason like my motivation levels to read like a random like book that I find on the library is it doesn't really make much sense I, yeah, I it's something because like as soon as like you pick up a new book like you get like this thing as soon as you get it in your hands or like on your on your ipad or whatever on your phone that you like immediately want to open it up whereas books that you've had on your shelf for a while you're just kind of looking at it and you're just like mm. i'll save it for later yeah yeah like it later was like six months ago and it's still there you know book talk ruined me i used to buy one book at a time and read it and then i would buy another book i would not like buy Maybe I'd buy a whole series, but that's it. I would just buy one book at a time. And now I have a whole like cart for my books that I like are on my TBR. It's awful. I have been seeing people do the like TBR cards and I'm jealous because I can I can only put like my books here. Like that's the only place I can put it because I have no room for it in my yeah. room. That's why I got a cart because also I just like, I was running out of space um, and I don't have like, room in my room to add another bookshelf mm -hmm. but so uh, but the tbr card is pretty nice i will say a lot of people like make them like rainbow order and stuff oh yeah know. mine mm. <laughs> mine's like i don't have a nightstand and mine is right next to my bed and i'll just like catch myself putting trash in there and i'm like oh my god oh my gosh <laughs> it's like it, it's literally doubles as a snack cart at this point but it's hidden behind the books, so it's fine. It's it's hidden. Be careful not to get any crumbs on your books. I don't have. There's not. It's not that kind of trash. It's just like, <laughs> I'm not that gross. Okay. <laughs> it's just like that would. Well, be maybe I maybe I am that gross, but I'm. It's not that bad. <laughs> well, like just like wrappers. Sometimes wrapping paper. Wrapping, yeah. Just sometimes be warned because I have done that work because I have like a little caddy. And I put in like my trash after eating something. And then I put my book on top of that. And then I pulled my book out and I was like, I was like, oh, my book. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just kind of okay. like dust it off. That brings up a good question. What is your go-to reading snack? That's a good question. Um, or drink. Or drink. I usually just like eat like anything like I really like Cheez-Its and then like goldfish so I'll probably be eating those and then I'll find like crumbs in my book and I have to like um in like the crack of like the spine yeah it, and you're like trying to get it out but it like goes in deeper you're like crap and you have to oh my gosh or something to like dig it out yeah. like oh my gosh the struggles of being a reader sometimes are yeah but That's Maggie what's yours coffee I like to drink coffee while I, and it's really bad because I'll be like sitting in bed drinking coffee and Carly's like, what, what are you doing? It's like 11 PM. And I'm like, caffeine has no, caffeine doesn't do anything for me anymore. <laughs> yeah. It actually makes me, I have very severe ADHD. And like, if you have ADHD, it like actually has the opposite effect on people with ADHD yeah. versus like a like neurotypical. Is that? Yeah. But like, cause like the medicine I take to like help me focus has caffeine in it, I think. Yeah. So like it really, it just like mellows me out. Uh, yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Like me too. <laughs> I, have ADHD. I, I, I think that like my caffeine is now just like an addiction where it's like a compulsory thing where like, I have to have my coffee. Like it's my, my ritual now. It's like, I go to school and there's the Starbucks, so I might as well just get some Starbucks right before class. I mean, I'm paying for it, not with actual money, with my, but with tuition money, might as well. Oh, and that's nice. I would take advantage of that. End up with like five shots of espresso daily. <laughs> oh my. Five shots, that's probably not the best thing, but who you know, am I to judge? I have like I literally have a monster can like like hanging from my like ceiling. <laughs> so my friend likes the gold monsters, 
she just started drinking those and she's gonna make like a wall in her dorm room of all oh, the God. monsters that she yeah I like I save them like after I drink them because like I I like putting them up because it's kind of like and also people in the back of my videos I think it's kind of funny they're like what the hell is that <laughs> and I'm like well so you see um it's like my own natural decor you know it's a scenery um it's it's, it's best yeah it, this is my life you can't yes. change it <laughs> the caffeine addiction like it, it's bad it's like it started in like high school for me and I just never got back like I've tried <laughs> to get off caffeine and I just am worse like I'm so mean I like get like my migraines and it's it's so bad like it's so bad I had like yeah. three cups of coffee at work today I was reading. I was reading. Okay, I was reading. So I was like drinking. And I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is so good!" And so I just keep drinking, and because I like have like a straw, so I'm like sitting there with my straw oh in my, my mouth, like flipping pages, like frantically, like a goblin reading. And then I look down. I'm like, "Oh, I need another drink." And so I like put it in the Keurig. So it's, it's something weird about like drinking through the straw rather rather than like sipping it. It's just like when you drink something through a straw, like it just disappears. So yeah. Much you're just like I know that there was way more drink in this cup yeah than what I was actually taking in that's not right the logistics of drinking it just doesn't make sense how like I've just not ending up yeah this drink has gone somewhere and it's not in my body (laughs) um kind of to change pace what are your top three authors um because we have your top three books but what are your top three authors okay I'm thinking um Probably Casey McQuiston, which I believe they only have one book out, but I'm very excited for they have, Well, One Last Stop comes out soon. Yeah, that's the book that's coming out soon. I'm trying to get them to send me an arc. I'm bothering them quite a bit. Um, Might as well. Do we no, know bullying brands, it works. Sometimes <laughs> it really does. When you bully brands, they will eventually give you stuff. And that I have noticed. Is that how Book of the Month sponsored you? <laughs> No, they actually reached out to me and I was like, oh, okay, I'm famous now. They come to me. I don't have to go to them. I am in high demand. Make that bank if you can. Yeah, I actually don't get paid, but I get free books. I mean, I, I, yeah, I'm like 16, so it's not the biggest deal for me to get paid at this point. Yeah. But I, I do, I have a paid sponsorship coming up, which is nice, but yes, but I mean, you get paid in books and what reader doesn't yeah. get paid in books? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, your other two favorite authors. Okay, I'm thinking. Um, I love how we all look at our bookshelf to like, to remember. Yeah. I, I forget like, oh, Nina Varela. Um, she wrote the Crier's War duology. And I, that is the only thing she has out, but she is working on another book. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Saba Tahir, the Ember and the Ashes Quartet. I love that. I have not read the last book, but I got a spoiler for it. I got and the, I, if you're, if it's what I think it is, I got that spoiled too. It was an art photo by Amelia something. And it spoiled it for me. And I was like, I was like, okay, it's been two months. It's been two months. No, it's been a month and a half, kind of. And I was just like, okay. I should have read the book because I have the book. I just didn't, yeah. I couldn't read it because I was like, I can't, I can't, I don't want it to end because Saba to hear that series is like. I know, I love it. Elias? I probably oh. saw the art print that you saw and because I've only read the first book so far. Yeah, but I think I, if I, if it's like the big spoiler, they're like that. Yeah. It was like a big spoiler and I was just like I yeah that got spoiled for me too I was so upset and then I thought it was fake so book twitter is interesting um I'm scared I'm scared they are so mean on there first of all they are so mean and I don't like I don't really like affiliate like my like username isn't literary lesbian on there so like they don't know I'm like 
I'm like, I feel like I'm You're undercover. Famous. You're famous. Yeah, I'm famous. You guys. <laughs> no, it's more like they don't know that I'm on book talk because for some reason they hate book talk because they like have all these things, but like they are the biggest hypocrites in the world. They do the exact same things that they hate book talk for. And it's just, so basically there's like a list of people that like, if you go on book Twitter, you should, this is a media block. They, they everyone knows who they are. Well, I would say most people. It's just Are like they just really rude? Group. Yeah, they are like legitimately like very like nasty. Mm-hmm. And um, they, somebody made a tweet saying you should use spoiler warnings in your like tweets because that's a common common thing. courtesy you know yeah. and they started quote tweeting it with like the like huge spoilers for every popular series and we're just going on and on the entire friend group and I'm like is that how you got it yeah Sky and I was like and I, I like showed it to my friend I was so upset I and then I like convinced myself it was fake and then I'm talking to my friend I'm like please tell me this is not true and he's like, do you want me to tell you the truth or like lie to you? I'm like, okay, well now I know the answer. <laughs> it's just like, I, it yeah. Like they it was- didn't do anything wrong. They just were like, hey, don't spoil it. They were being nice too. I don't understand what's so like controversial about that. Yeah, the photo, it was posted, I think by a touch of magic designs, um, which is like a Etsy shop. They posted it or the artist did. And it was the first picture on my timeline. So I couldn't like scroll away or anything. And I was just like, because I like looked at it. I was like, who is this? And I was like, no, I was like, no. And I texted my friend Kate and I was just like, I got this spoiled for me. And she was like, oh, because I got like the Fairy Loot exclusive editions of them because it's one of my favorite series. Mm -hmm. It's like these nice exclusive editions. And I was going to reread the series and read the last one and then maybe do another giveaway for sky beyond the storm the regular edition mm-hmm. and then it's what i was just like oh maybe now i just have to read it because i'm yeah just- it was good i really liked it but <laughs> when did you get it spoiled for you um was it like when it first came out i forget when did it come out was it like december 10th or something december 13th Okay, I got it spoiled, like, I think, like, a week after it came out, and I hadn't gotten it at that time. I, um, had gotten it as a gift for the holidays, and, like, I, and then when I got it, I think, no, wait, okay, this math is not adding up in my head. Oh, I think I knew my mom was gonna get me it, because it's just, like, um, because I think I put it on my wish list, and she took it off. Oh, (laughs) So I like I was like okay and I like I was like excited to read it and then I see this and I'm I was I was so pissed off I was in the reason I was on their account in the first place is because I was going to block them because like my friend was like this person like did like this and it's like I just don't yeah, I, I started putting like spoil warnings and stuff because Grace got spoiled for some books for her in the comments. So now whenever she posts a video, I comment on her thing. I'm like, do not spoil this for her. I will come for you if you try to spoil the rest of the series for her because she needs to read it on her own. Like yeah. for a long time, people weren't posting. And I, I admit I wasn't posting spoiler warnings either. And I should have. And I do it now because I don't want anybody to be spoiled because yeah. it's the worst feeling. <laughs> I feel that was like, that's like a new thing for me because like I never I don't know I feel like I never really got books spoiled for me before I joined book talk but also this is like my first mm, no that's a lie I was on tumblr but I feel like I had a Percy Jackson tumblr and (laughs) I recently went viral on tumblr like recently because somebody reposted like one of my comments which it was so embarrassing because it was, I was like, I thought H, the comment was on a post about HP Lovecraft. And I was like, I thought HP Lovecraft was a Minecraft YouTuber. And because like, all I knew was the joke about his cat. And for some reason, like, if you know what I'm talking about, that would, I feel like that could be applicable to a lot of Minecraft YouTubers where that would be pretty believable. And then his name, HP Lovecraft. 
And then people are like, oh my gosh, they call themselves literally lesbian. Oh, they, I hate women. And I was like, <laughs> first of all, they're like, you need to read a book. Oh, is this like ironic? And I was like, okay, first of all, no, I was being dead serious. And two, ooh, let's, let's calm down. I just, sorry, I haven't read every single book about an old, like about an old white man to exist. That, that's just not my cup of tea. Mm-hmm. I was like, <laughs> yeah, um, that kind of segue right into oh. what, uh, I, Grace is better at segues. She did an amazing segue last, <laughs> and I was just like, Grace, you really had to do that. But um, what are your favorite YA LGBTQ plus Valentine's book, or not Valentine's, but like romance books that you would recommend for Valentine's Day? Okay, so first, one of my most recent reads, it was Honey Girl, which I'm not 100% sure if it has come out, um, because I read it on ARC, and then I got it through Book of the Month, but like, since I'm an influencer, they send me it early, mm-hmm. so, but that book, you definitely need to read it when it comes out. I read it in, like, because I got it on eARC originally, because, like, companies will send it through, like, NetGalley. Um, yeah. And um, so I was reading on there. And I usually do not, my experience with ARCs, they're very hit or miss, especially when they're LGBTQ, because like, you'll be reading one, especially like, and it's just like, they're like, oh, I'm the head of GSA club. I have my like, love is love t-shirt on. I'm like, Jesus. That's not all of us. (laughs) Like, I, it's just, what the hell is this? And it's just like, legitimately so cringe. (laughs) Yeah. And then I just realized, I just am now realizing that Honey Girl is not YA, so let's backtrack. Uh, but definitely read Honey Girl still. Okay. Now adult romance. It comes yeah. out February 23rd. February okay. 23rd. Okay, now I gotta look at my show because I'm forgetting. Oh, wait, no, that's not LGBTQ. <laughs> Why am I? This is, um, okay. I, I think we put her on the, we put them on the spotlight too fast. Okay. Oh, well, Heartstopper is very cute. Heartstopper? It's a graphic novel, which, but it's like, it's so adorable and you can read it for free. Um, Like the author posted it on Webtoon and Tapas, which are like apps. Mm -hmm. So they like, it's a, it's a very good, it's very cute. It's, um, it's MLM. Um, but I definitely recommend it because it's really adorable. And it's not like my Webtoons app. Yeah. (laughs) People don't know about webtoons, but there's like the Wrath and the Dawn has like a like yes, thing on there, and that's how I found out about the book. Hey, that's how I found out. Like it, it just kept saying inspired by the novel by, and then I was just like, okay, inspired by the novel. Like, okay, is it like a graphic novel or is this like a? And it kept saying that and I'm just like, no, this has to be a book. So then I look it up, and then I'm just like, oh, it's an actual book. So I'm like, okay, I can't read the webtoon because I want to read. Yeah, the I then, like. I- and I was like oh this is a thing this mm-hmm. book is a thing yeah I yeah that's how I found it as well um I need to read that book still that's embarrassing but I still have there's so many books that like I just haven't read and it's so embarrassing when someone like is on my shelf they're like oh I saw like this book on your shelf what were your opinions and I was like <laughs> I haven't read it I, yeah um Okay, why am I like this? Is my my whole brand? Oh, <laughs> the Henna Wars, um, very cute as well. Henna Wars. Um, okay. Yeah, that's W L W. Um, and I think it's a. I'm so bad at giving summaries for books. People ask me, they're like, "Oh, what's this book about?" And I'm like, "You can give us like the main tropes." Yeah. Oh, okay. Tropes. It's like um, friends to lovers. Both of those that I recommended were friends to lovers. Mm-hmm. Um. I, I have like mixed opinions on enemies to lovers. Oh, I, feel I saw like this in your comment section. Yes, I I I have I have like a whole like I have this like controversial take that I literally like I was like okay I want to talk about this on the podcast. Do so it. Can I like run it past? I was like running past my friend. Okay. All opinions. My we- controversial take on enemies to lovers. It's so popular, but I feel like it, it, not until I enjoy enemies to lovers as well. But I think it can, like, honestly be, like, rooted in misogyny because, like, the the main characters, so the, the personification of, like, all these, like, 
negative traits seen in women, like so-called negative traits, like the stubborn, sarcastic, like outspoken, like that type of thing, like opinionated. And it's like all about these so-called negative traits. And then like a guy like who sees all these bad things about them and still finds them worthy of love. So it's like, it's yeah. just like, I feel like it, it, a lot of it can be like rooted, I feel in like the male gaze and like seeking like male validation. Mm-hmm. And also some anime to lovers books just go too far. I think the line has been blurred on what is okay and what isn't okay. And like, I, like I'll occasionally read like books that are like, I know are gonna be awful just so I can like, cause like I'll like read it just so I can like properly criticize it. Cause I feel like I, it's hard to like criticize books you haven't read. So I've read The Captive Prince, if you've heard of it. I've heard of it. Yeah. Awful. It's I've seen so the fan disgusting. Art for it. It's yeah. legitimately like made me sick to my stomach and I had to read, like I had to stop several times. It was so gross. And if you, if you're listening, I forgot, I forgot this is, nah, but if you're, if you haven't heard of it, so basically, it's basically a sex slave and their owner, essentially, and the fact that that's okay, like, the fact that people make it seem like that's okay is just, like, legitimately disgust me. Yeah, like, I've seen the fan art for it, and I'm, like, what is this? I, like, looked at the fan art, and it's, like, this guy in chains, and I'm, like, what is this I was like um and I I've like seen it because I've worked at Barnes and Noble so I helped somebody find it before and that's when I found out about it and I looked it up and I was like oh that looks interesting because I like romance and I like Mm -hmm. like medieval like duke and duchesses getting together and like a ruse I watch I read a lot of manga for that um but I like looked it up and I looked at the fan art I was like nope not for me I don't like that yeah I've seen like people recommend it on book talk as like a good like LGBTQ book and I'm like and then they don't put an age warning like mm. I, people who don't like I understand yeah it's like annoying to do like look up all these like recommended ages but like if you're like knowingly recommending a book like that and you aren't like putting like a warning because like I like I've talked to someone they're like oh yeah I'm like 13 and that got recommended to me and I read it like and I'm 16 I'm not gonna like sit here and be like oh I'm mature like but I like even I was like "Mm, this is just like there it's it's I this goes too far yeah yeah it's like people like I'm all for enemies to lovers. Yeah, it's fine. And I know I had that controversial take about like misogyny, but like, it's still, it's not like- It's kind of true though. It's kind of like true. You do have to admit, I'd like, I also think that like, there's a difference between like enemies to lovers and then like, oh, like I'm not your friend, but like, I like you. And then we become friends and I like you versus like a true enemies to lovers is like truly on the opposite side of like teams and stuff. Like- um Mm -hmm. like in like night uh that's not a YA book I'm trying to think of one real quick um but I like I definitely think that there's there's like enemies to lovers and then there's enemies to lovers like there's an actual like I feel like a lot of books get grouped into enemies to lovers when they're really not enemies to lovers um definitely I agree with that but have you read Girls of Paper and Fire yes I have I have you read the Um, second book yet (laughs) I tried reading the second book and just for me like it like it says like all the trigger warnings in the first book Mm -hmm. and the second book Mm -hmm. but for me like the like discussion of PTSD was just like a sensitive topic for me Mm because I like like I said before I'm like transparent I do have PTSD and I feel like it it just like I made a conscious I was like I love this book series I still think it's good but I just think personally it's not the best thing for me to read it Mm -hmm. so I have not it's very I think a lot of readers kind of going back to like that maturity thing is um you do have to it's a mature thing to realize that you can't read mature books um I think one of our followers she says that she's not going to read above her age level and I think that's very important when it comes to recommending books and stuff is Mm -hmm. like recognizing like hey this is for adults and I'm a 13 14 15 year old child I shouldn't 
I sh- probably shouldn't be reading this kind of content. I should probably be reading Percy Jackson. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'll recommend stuff, and I'll include an age warning. Someone's like, oh, I'm 13, and I read that book. And I'm like, yeah, definitely. I'm not saying they're not varying maturity levels, but mm-hmm. I think also you may think you're mature, but yeah. there's probably a lot of stuff that went over your head when you were reading it. And also, there's no need to, like, grow up so quickly. Like, I know I was like that when I was younger. I was like, oh, I can, like, read this stuff. It's fine. But, like, it's there's plenty of good younger books. Like, there's nothing, you can read those. There's no problem. You don't have to There's no start rush. reading all these, like, yeah. They'll be there when you're older. Like, mm-hmm. and I'm, trust me, you're probably not missing much. Honestly, because, like, there's so many kids. Who, oh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to read that book because everybody's reading it. But then it becomes, like, a thing of just, like, you're missing out on, like, what your mind is ready for because you're looking to look for bigger that I saw people have told me like the ages like I made a joke I think about like the young ages people have read like Akatar and people are like oh I read this when I was like 11 and I was like what the hell like 11 yeah it's just like I don't even want my sister reading it and she's like 15 yeah it's just and I think some of that comes down to, because I know I did, I was like, how the hell is this like classified as YA? And I looked it up and Sarah Mass said in an interview once that she knows it's not YA, but she like, they market it as YA for like money basically, because yeah. YA is the more marketable genre. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to get more like, um, like it's gonna make more money if you market it as YA, just yeah. because there's a larger like audience. Mm-hmm. And that just like really bothered me because that's just like, yeah. And it's 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 annoying because a lot of publishers do that, or yeah. like it's with covers and stuff. I started noticing the trend, um, not to harp on it, but like red, white, and royal blue definitely looks like a YA book. Yeah. When I first got it, I thought it was YA, and I really often repeat the story. But I work at I worked at Barnes and Noble, and I had a mother ask like, "Is this appropriate for my fourteen year old daughter?" And I was like, "No." Like that book is not appropriate for a fourteen year old. It yeah. is in the adult romance section at Barnes and Noble. It does I didn't know that. Me. It because people are like, oh, all like romance books have like the naked people on the cover, and like yeah, a lot of them do, but not all of them. And that's not like saying like, oh, they need to have like, like I I don't like those covers like to be, <laughs> but um I think people just like on book talk people need to do a better job of like putting ages and mm-hmm. like I'll see people. it's not that that hard yeah it's really not that hard grace you're kind of low are you speaking through your airpods by chance no i'm just not talking very loud oh (laughs) (laughs) well way to call me and Faye out that's fine just call us out (laughs) that was not that was not that's not what i was doing it was just like yeah Grace, do you have any questions? <laughs> you kind of threw me off there. <laughs> okay, okay, yes. Um, <clears throat> I do. Okay, so since we've kind of gone over a couple of tropes that you like, what are your top go-to tropes when you're looking for a book? Um, I definitely like, I like slow burn. Um, I, it bothers me to no end when they just like are kissing like before page 100. I'm like, oh, let's slow down. Uh, um, but like, yeah, like my favorite book, they don't kiss until like way to the end. Oh, is that kind of, I actually, you don't, I, I never said the name of the book. So, um, but I really like slow burn and I do like enemies to lovers when it's done correctly. I feel like I saw someone made this joke on one of my mutuals. They're like, um, I only like enemies to lovers if it's like gay because like all straight relationships are enemies to lovers. And it's like, <laughs> so I really do like prefer enemies to lovers when it's like gay. Um, but like and straight people sometimes do, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I get that a lot. I feel like a, like the very popular trope right now is enemies to lovers. So we get a lot of enemies to lovers in 
or I guess a lot of popular books right now are the enemies to lovers books Mm -hmm. and a lot of them are straight white characters yeah which is sad (laughs) and like people whenever I tell people like I for some reason people have it in their mind that I literally don't read books about straight people which I think is kind of funny but I do definitely read books with straight people um otherwise I would barely be reading that many books because there's just like there like there are more books that are LGBTQ but some of them are just so bad I see people like recommending stuff and you can tell they're doing it for the sake of diversity because I'm like I've read that book and that book is like literal dog shit like I'm so sorry but that book is awful yeah and, like so have you read Rainbow Rowell's books because I know she's yeah. She's a very, she lives here in Omaha. Um, she goes to the Barnes & Noble that I shop at. Um, yeah, fun fact. Um, so my question is, can you kind of explain it? Because I've tried to ask people about it and they haven't really explained it to me. So do you know why she's, because prob- I tried to read her book, yeah. Carry On, but I couldn't finish it. And then there's a big problem with Fangirl as well. Could you explain that a little bit for yes. me and for our listeners? Yeah, I can. Um, I will say, um, I carry on is one of my favorite books just because like I really connect to the characters yeah I didn't include my favorite book things because like while it is my favorite book I'm not gonna like Mm. promote it like that I feel like it would be kind of hypocritical of me Mm -hmm. but I have made videos regarding um Rainbow Row but basically the majority of her being problematic comes from her book that's not affiliated with the Simon Snow like anthology it's um Eleanor and Park and it's a book about a um, mixed um, Korean um, character and just some of the stuff, like, it's just like they use, the way they describe like Asian characters in the book is just really uncomfortable and just strange. And a lot of like Asian people have spoken out about how uncomfortable it made them. And then there comes with the fact that it's just like comes with her being uneducated and it's obvious she didn't put enough research into it. The kid's name is Park, which is a surname, not a first name. And um, in like Korea, like last names like have meaning in like Korean families. They have like a very like strong like symbolism behind them. So it's like offensive for you to just like, she like says like, oh, it's him like connecting to his Korean past, but it's just like openly offensive in a way. And then there's just like, there was like the use of like the term um, China doll used to describe um, one of the characters. And it was like the like love interest who's white. Well, no, I haven't read the book. I'm gonna be honest, but Eleanor like infantilizes and like kind of fetishizes the love interest and it's just never talked about. Mm -hmm. And it's just the way I have like, I you can like google quotes and some of them are just like weird Mm -hmm. um and i know fangirl um i haven't read that because you know but um like the whole premise is just really stupid it's about someone like writing fan fiction it's 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 the she's writing carry on i think that's what it is is she's writing carry on and then carry on is what she's writing and i thought that was a really that was a really unique way to write books is have your first book be about Mm -hmm. writing a series and you're writing this yeah I think it was because like she didn't like plan on continuing it but then Mm -hmm. she like fell in love with the characters but yeah and like I guess like the main character when she's writing the fan fiction it kind of like is glaringly obvious that it's like fetishization in a way Mm -hmm. so I think that's just it's like kind of just Rainbow Rowell being like very ignorant so like I would always recommend while I do love Carry On and it holds a special place in my heart I buy her book secondhand. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I bought Carry On here in Omaha, and they were like, "Oh, did she sign it?" And I was like, "What?" And they were like, "She lives here. Did she sign it?" And I was like, "Oh, she lives in Nebraska. That explains a lot." I'm, I'm not. No yeah. <laughs> no, I. I have to be. <laughs> I live in Ohio, and while I do live near Cleveland, which is more liberal, I mm-hmm. live in such an awful suburb. Like it's. Mm-hmm. Like, I've been, like, called a, like, kike. I don't know. It's not, like, a, it's a slur against, like, Jewish people. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. And, like, for some reason, like, my, 
I'm like one of like maybe three Jewish people in my high school. Um, the like shit that I've like gotten and like I like you wouldn't think like people would make that big of a deal but like for some reason because there's just so like they hear it from their parents honestly mm-hmm. yeah and I yeah I think that's what the difference is with like you, t- you can tell a lot of readers are very the, the thing about reading is it allows you to like connect with a lot of different people and I feel like that's why readers are usually a lot more open and they're a lot more accepting of everybody is because you read these stories and how can you not connect with these characters when you Mm -hmm. read their whole story and you fall in love with them and like yeah I'm not a gay man but I love um red white and royal blue like I can relate to the characters and I love them they're I mean Henry is just (laughs) (laughs) some of them like i like, I know I'm a lesbian, but some of the guys that I see, like, you guys hyping up on book talk, I really just don't understand it. I really don't. I okay. I just don't see it. I, think I don't understand either. Like, mm-hmm. the Darkling. Oh, just. <laughs> um, there are guys that I definitely, I'm just like, wow, like, ooh. You know, while I'm reading the book and, you know, in the after effects of reading the book, you fall in love with the character because the main character falls in love with them and you're reading yeah. through their eyes. So the only the- one I really like is Elias. Elias. I like, I'll, I'll, I I can appreciate that man. I Elias is something. Because, like, when I read it for the first time, I didn't think that I was going to, you know, fall for him. But I was like, whoa, okay, okay. Yeah. I can, you know? But then, like, after a while, like, you know, they fade, like, your attraction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's books that I read back in, like, you know, summer, and I was like, oh, yeah, they're definitely my type. But then, like, after a while, it's just kind of like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I fall more in love with, like, their relationship and not, like, the specific character. It's like, Mm -hmm. a lot of people talk about having, like, a crush on a character, and, like, really, like, I get that. But, like, I'm more, like, I just, like. The bond. Yeah, like I want the relationship. I don't really want like one of them, you know? I think that's definitely more what I actually love. Like, yeah, I like mm-hmm. them, you know, I like I like my boyfriends and all. But mm-hmm. um definitely it's more of just like their understanding for like the main character or like the love interest, how they build that relationship, listening to them, talking to them, consoling them, you know, that one trope of like one wakes up with a nightmare and the other one hurt like, comfort you know i'm like yeah. i want that too and you fall for that for what they do for mm-hmm. their actions and that's why i feel like that's why certain boyfriends are up like actual my boyfriends because of what they do in certain moments and i'm like I fall yeah with what you do do i actually wish you were real to actually be my boyfriend no because you would probably be like no Ugh, some no. of like my favorite characters i would definitely like bitch slap if i saw them in real life like there's so many characters that i'm like especially with the enemies to lovers like yeah i get it the love like the main character forgave you and all that shit but i'd still definitely like beat but, you up you know well, just a slap across the face yeah i, I, I feel like the main character is so much more forgiving than i would be i <laughs> hold grudges like i, I really oh, do i can hold a grudge too don't mess up Maggie because I'll hold a grudge. <laughs> I'll to you. Friendship. I can hold friendship goods too. So yeah, no, Grace has Grace will always have my back. I if anything ever happens to me, I just tell Grace and she's like, I'm on it. She's like, I'm on it. I got your back. And I'm just like, thank you. <laughs> and it's so sweet how protective she is. She's really, she's like a mother bear protectiveness. Um, I fear for when I do have children. <laughs> that's what my dad says like a, a, about my youngest brother he's just like gosh you're like a tyrant you're always on them and i'm just like yeah but do you see him cleaning up after himself do you see him putting away his clothes do you see him take a shower every single day my yeah. mom there's like a stereotype that jewish moms are like really overprotective and like honestly it's very true my mom I love her to death, but she is crazy sometimes. Like an example of it, like, so I, 
I did get bullied for being Jewish. And like I told my mom eventually, and she she brought a whole Holocaust survivor to the school to give a like presentation. Yeah. And she did it for like three years in a row. And I was like, like, it's like, it's not funny, but it's also funny. Like, geez. Yeah. Like, it, it's the fact that she cares. So like, she's like, it's funny mm-hmm. that like, she's so protective that she's like, she does it. So yeah, it's not that like the Holocaust, it's, it's, it's the yeah. fact that she I'm does that I'm not laughing at the Holocaust, let's <laughs> be clear. But, yeah, um, we're not laughing at the Holocaust. It is. I think if anybody misconstrued that, it would be really interesting to see. But no, yeah, I I can see that. I get canceled for being an anti-Semite, even though I am a Semite. Um, that'd be interesting. I have kind of like a similar thing, not like that, not like that, but just like an overprotective like uh, family member. My grandma likes uh, in elementary school. I had this thing. Um, very early on like kindergarten and I would always need to go to the bathroom like so bad and my teacher was like no you can't go you can't go and I was just like but I need to go and so I was like fine and I'm outing myself right now (laughs) and I would be like well there you go I told you I couldn't help it and this is what it would be and it was like a constant thing and then like I would go home and I'm like my mom and parents knew about it they're just like, why won't she just let you go? And she's like, she does go on break, but I go on break, but I need to go when it, it's a thing. Anyways, my grandma gets wind of this. My grandma on my dad's side, my yaya, she finds out about this and she pulls up to the school one day and she busts into the class and she just starts going off on my teacher <laughs> and she just starts saying all of this in Spanish. And most of my class is Spanish speaking, not my teacher. And she's just going off on her and just like, I'm not going to say, <laughs> but a lot of things. And she's just like, come on, let's go. And then like my teacher's just there, like taking it. And she's just like, she signs a paper and she's like, can you give this to your, your grandma so that she can give it to the office? Because I know she's going to sign you out. And then I walk out and I look at all the, the kids, some of whom would make fun of me because of whatever. And I just went like, ha. <laughs> <laughs> I was so embarrassed to come back and look at my teachers in the face after that, but did she let me go to the bathroom after that? Sure she did. So now we know why you're homeschooled. (laughs) Listen. I can't even laugh at that because I'm currently homeschooled. (laughs) After, okay? Years after. This is very early on. And I'm not saying that it didn't, it had nothing to do with it, Maggie. Don't be trying to twist up the story. Okay, our last question for the day or night. Day. It's night. We always film at night. Like, yeah. But for those of you listening, it'll be day time for you guys. Um, would you rather only read the first book in a series and not finish it, or only read the books of one author forever? interesting um I feel like I could definitely just like I I would definitely choose the like only read the first book in a series because sometimes I actually do that like I'm like I promise I'm gonna come back to it but I just don't um and then also I feel like I could I there's so many ways that I could get out of this I'm like overthinking this but like if I just read like standalones and then also I feel like I I am an advocate for fan fiction. People make fun of it, but some fan fiction is so good. I read a fan fiction that I thought was better than the original series. Like, cause like the, it's like, I've read like 400,000 word fan fictions. And it's like, is this longer than the series? Um, but it's like, I, I, could, I feel like I could fill that gap in my heart from not being able to finish the series with fan fiction. Have you, I'm going to ask a, I'm going to ask a quick question, Grace, before we end. Have you read the Draco Malfoy fan fiction, which is the like auction? And, like, oh, no, but I've heard of it. Okay. I guess, isn't you like fan fiction? I had to ask. 
<laughs> because I'm trying to find out who's actually read it so they can tell me what's it about because I'm not gonna read it so I need somebody else to tell me <laughs> So I think it's, I don't know if it's a self-insert or not, but it's either a self-insert or it's Germani, so like Hermione. Yeah. So I think it's, it's, it's whatever you think it would be when you hear the word option, I believe that's what it is. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's not a, it's not, you know. It's not a kid's book. <laughs> Definitely got some, you know, high warnings in there, but um, it's enemies to lovers of course oh yeah enemies to lovers that makes it it's 100 percent okay now yeah <laughs> uh, i have not read um the rest of the harry potter series i read the first one um with my students downloading the pdf and um my co-workers in my teaching group were all reading the series together all on pdf you know and I kept seeing it on my For You page, Siren Reed um, on TikTok. She's like a big, like, Hermione um, fanfic reader. And I kept seeing it. And then I saw, like, that one um, user on TikTok who binds the actual fanfic book, prints it, and, like, she gives to, like, the actual author of the fanfic or, like, She's basically a publishing house in her house and does like everything on their own. And the people buying it are basically just paying for like the supplies and to like the original author, which I'm like, I appreciate The that. only fan fiction that like for Harry Potter that like often comes on my thing, like for you page, is like all the young dudes, which have you heard of that? No. We are in different sides of TikTok. Okay. We really are. No. Okay. So this is like a Marauders fan fiction. So. Oh. Yeah, Ooh, I know which one you're talking about. It's really long, and it's so it's basically like Wolf Star, which I like started reading it because I was like, everyone's hyping this up, and it's like very well written. I haven't finished it, but it's I that's like the thing that always comes up on my for you page, and I'm not even on Harry Potter TikTok, like, if, but for some reason it finds me. Um, and I've seen people like printing it out and like having yeah. physical books because it's like a trilogy. It's like it's big. separated in three parts and it's like I did like compare it to the length of like the Infernal Devices series probably maybe a little shorter but it's definitely long oh that that, that see that's, that's why th that's a lot of commitment that's why yeah. I'm like people hate on fan fiction writers but like it takes a lot to write I fiction. have written fan fiction so one of the things, I don't know if you saw this, but I did, it was like as a joke. I remember I was on live stream one time. I was like, somebody like, I was like joking around. I was like, oh, I haven't written fan fiction since I was like in middle school. Cause I used to write Percy Jackson fan fiction. Awful. But, um, so I was like the first person who like says something, I'll write like a, like fan fiction of it. And somebody, the first thing that comes in is somebody's like, write a Nessian like pegging fan fiction. I was like, so I did write it. I have, I'm a published author, you know. It's, it was so difficult. I cannot, I was writing it and I literally like had to like time skip it because I was like, I cannot describe this. Like it's awful, but it is now fade to black. I did, I did do it. Um, okay. So that's where we're ending tonight. <laughs> Oh my gosh. No. Oh. <clears throat> <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta plug my fan fiction before we end. <laughs> Go yeah. read my fan. No, I'm not. <laughs> it has like a thousand hits and I don't know where those hits came from. Uh, TikTok. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like some of the, I like put in the comments, I was like, has anyone like found this that isn't from my TikTok and people have commented saying like I don't know who you are um <laughs> but they're like I like the fan fiction and I was like <laughs> um, oh that's funny yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well to kind of wrap it up um thank you so much for coming on um do you want to plug all your socials real quick uh sure so my tiktok is my main thing uh literary lesbian and 
Wait, why am I forgetting? Okay, my Instagram, I literally don't use, but it's literally a lesbian, except the first E in lesbian is a three. And then my Twitter is crier a les, so cry. <laughs> I gotta spell this out. C-R-I-E-R-A-Y-L-A-S. Mm-hmm, okay. And those, Great. yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Oh, this, wait, um, my Goodreads is literally lesbian, just as well. I don't know. We'll have all the stuff in the description we'll put your link tree right in the oh, description yes. so they Wonderful. can like click and they <laughs> can just go right to it and follow you on tiktok which you're pretty big on tiktok you have i think 44.4k i just hit 45k oh, today hit because 45K. one of my yeah one of my videos did well it's mm -hmm. it hit like 90k views i saw that yeah it's at half a million now um yeah, it's the video is not the thing I would want to go viral, but you know, <laughs> me looking to go look at it right now. <laughs> it's well, <laughs> I felt attacked. <laughs> oh wait, no, um, that's a different one. I that one, that's a different one. That one's gosh, at like wait. 90k views. The other one, I made a video talking about "Call Me by Your Name" and how like people make fun of it, but they don't make fun of one of the things that they should. Basically, there's a scene where one of them takes a shit and the other one walks in and then like, so he like finishes business and they're just like making eye contact. And, oh, this, and yeah, I see it now. yeah, and he's like, don't flush it. I want to see because it's what? like, I want to see like all parts of you. Like there's no part to us that are secret. Oh, no. And then they switch places and the other one takes a shit and they make out and like do this whole thing and then look at it and like, it's like some like romantic like poetic thing and it's disgusting congratulations on hitting 45k thank you <laughs> you're at 45.2k but it is at six six hundred and fifty thousand oh, wow. so you're up there you're, you're getting even yes. more famous oh yeah i'm famous sorry <laughs> i'm so sorry we'll have to bow down to you now yeah <laughs> <laughs> well bow thank you yeah, thank you thank you <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much for coming it was a pleasure yes. um grace do you have anything to say before it ends she seems speechless um <laughs> you really you really surprised her today <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> out of my head um <laughs> so anybody who's still watching or listening um i'm sorry <laughs> that yeah, you've seen I this chaos <laughs> it's hilarious though. my apologies <laughs> but are you really sorry <laughs> not even a little bit i'm gonna be real honest um oh. i'm gonna just plug something real quick i do have a giveaway going on i'll link it down below i'm giving away alexander bracken's lore um i have an extra copy i'm just gonna give it away um so you can go check that out and thank you so much Faye, for coming um yes. and we'll see y'all next week to talk about these violent delights um happy valentine's day it's oh valentine's. Yes. Mm, yes i hate valentine's I day <laughs> i i really just like don't find the significance but you know yeah <laughs> yeah i have your books back on so yes i'm gonna be working that night so i don't really i don't <laughs> care <laughs> okay well, we'll end it now. Finally, we'll end it. Yes. <laughs> I'm not faking out the endings anymore. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you, thank Faye, you. again. And we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.